Hey, this is Brock Ramirez, Embedded Systems Design. We are looking at the UART on the MSP430, and in this video, we're going to start looking at the receive functionality. So we'll do a quick overview of the system, how it works, and all the configuration registers, and this will prep us for our first example of receiving. Okay, so here's a block diagram that I drew of the receive portion of the UART. And at this point, I want to highlight that when I drew these figures in the book, what I do is I kind of simplify them down and I like to draw the, the transmit in its own block diagram and the receive in its own block diagram. But it's very important to note that the clock <clears throat> is the same in for both the transmit and receive when you're on one M, uh, MCU. And you can see that. Let me show you what the... Uh, let me show you what the monster data sheet has. So this is the block diagram that you see when you go into the fam MSP430 family user's guide. And notice that they have the, the incoming clock right here, and then they have the baud rate generator system right here. <clears throat> and then notice that it splits off and you've got a receiver clock and you've got a transmit clock. And it turns out that this is it, right? <laughs> I mean, this is, this, there's no way around it. Uh, the, now, What's cool about this is, you know, you, you just set up the baud rate once and you can transmit and receive at that baud rate. You set it up for the normal baud rate, so 9600 or 115, 200. You don't have to worry about the oversampling. That's all handled automatically for you in the receive portion of this. <clears throat> uh, but when I draw this out, when I look at this for the first time, or anybody looks at a UART for the first time, it, this is a somewhat overwhelming block diagram. You're like, oh my gosh, everything's going every which way. So the way that I split it up for my book is I, we focused on the transmit part first, and, and now we're looking at the receive part. But when you come back to the way that I draw the block diagram, you notice that I have this clock rate generator right here, and then I have the receive circuitry. And this looks you know, relatively simple. But just keep in mind that this portion is common to both the transmit circuitry and the receive circuitry on the single uh, MSP. Okay. All right. We got that. All right. So number one, uh, you set up the, the clock just like always. So if you choose, you decide on what baud rate you want to use uh, and you choose the clock source you're going to have, then you set up the prescaler uh, and then you set up the modulator. And remember, we're receiving, and I'll state it again, you don't have to worry about oversampling. It's all handled for you in the circuitry of the, of the peripheral. So you just set it up to 115, 200, or 96 or whatever. Okay. All right, <clears throat> then if you look at this, it's a standard serial to parallel converter. So you have an incoming pin, RX, and it goes into a shift register. And then when that shift register is done, it drops it into a receive buffer. Now notice that the receive buffer has all the settings for the frame options so that <clears throat> it understands you know, how many bits are coming in, which bits are coming in first. And these framing options are really important because you have to set them up on the receiver that match how they're set up on the transmit, just like the, the baud rate. And so when you set these up the same, then the receive buffer is able to like strip out all the stuff that it needs, that it uh cares about, it, it <clears throat> checks the parity, it does all this stuff, and it converts it back into a word that we can then read from the receive buffer. And if you look at the receive buffer, uh, it's, it's just a register, and it's 16 bits, but the upper eight bits aren't used, and so what happens is that the lower eight bits are where you see this uh, receive buffer, and you just read from it. So whenever you want to read from it, you just store it to a variable. And when you do that, it resets a whole bunch of bits, like the reset error bits and the, and the flag. Okay, when we do receiving, okay, you never know when it's coming in, <clears throat> okay? That means you don't have the ability to, to trigger events off of a button or trigger them off of a timer or anything like that. You always use interrupts, okay? So you're just doing whatever you're doing on the MCU, and then all of a sudden, something arrives on you know in the background and you need to be notified well just like every other peripheral on mcu you use the note it uses the concept of flags that trigger interrupts okay so that's key uh you, you saw in our transmit examples we were able to like get in a loop and like drive stuff every once in a while or we could drive stuff when a button was pressed no nah, it doesn't work like that with a receive receive is always going to use interrupts okay so what do you have for interrupts well there's actually on the msp430 there's two receive interrupts okay and the first one is just the simple 
uh, RX interrupt, okay? And it's got a flag, RXIFG, and it's got a local interrupt, RXIE. And what this does is when new information has been shifted in and it's put into the receive buffer, a flag is triggered. So this is fantastic. I mean, this is exactly what we need to know. We're just gonna have a uh, interrupt service routine that whenever it fires, new data is ready to be read, okay? And what's cool about it is that when you read from the buffer, you actually clear this flag. So now, personally, I'm a fan of manually clearing flags. <laughs> it's just how I, I am obsessed with these flags. You gotta clear them. But in this case, this is our first case where we have, we, in our interrupt service routine, we if we read from the, <laughs> the receive buffer, it is true that we don't have to clear this flag. We'll probably do it manually anyway, just because it's habit. Okay, anyway, there's another uh, interrupt, and this one is whenever the MCU sees a start bit. So this is, I'm not sure what you use this for. Uh, it must just be like to prepare for information coming in, uh, because when this fires, you know, and it's like, okay, data's coming, but it's not in yet. So I'm not... Anyway, it, it exists. Uh, you Maybe you'll figure out some use for it, <laughs> but we're, we're gonna use this one right here. This is the key interrupt for receives. Okay, but remember every, all four of the serial peripherals on the MSP430 each have their own dedicated interrupt vector. That means if we go down and we look at, uh, for example, A1, <clears throat> all of the transmit and all of the receive interrupt flags share the same vector. And so that means that we have to make sure that we, <clears throat> if we write an interrupt service routine, it has to handle both the transmit and both the receive. Uh, yeah, it just has to handle both of them. So then finally, where are these? Uh, where are these receive pins? Well, uh, just like the transmit, they have dedicated pins. And so remember on the MSP430, the one we're using, the FR2355, there's four serial peripherals. Two of them, A0 and A1, can have UART, okay? Now remember, A1 and A, A, A0 and A1 can be, can be configured to either be UART or SPY, but when they are in UART, you actually have two full duplex links. So the first A0 actually comes out to this little receive pin, or the receive pin is right here on port one bit six. So it's, it's on these two little pins right here, so that's A0. And then A1 is over here by our uh, on our J101 header. And there it is right there. You can see it. And so what's nice about this, this is really nice, is that remember that these this, this UART link right here is routed into this chip that converts it into a COM port and sends it up the USB cable or makes it look like a COM port. What's cool about that is with the transmit, we were able to transmit information up to the computer and we were able to open a terminal and tell the terminal to receive UART characters and display them as letters on the screen. Well, we can do the exact same thing now in order to send information back to the MCU. So when you open a terminal and you press a key, like capital A or capital H or lowercase j, it actually sends the ASCII code for that symbol back down the receive uh, line and you will receive it on the MCU receive buffer, okay? So A, let's just, A0 uh, is on port one bit six, so it shares with that. And then A1, its receive line is on port four bit two. Okay, that is it, that's an overview and that gets us ready to do our first UART receive example program. As always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.